But these days, if a boy calls, oh, that's perverted. Why do you call? Why do you call me? It's like overstepping a boundary. Exactly. And then why do you open up my door? Do you think I am? I am not capable of opening the door myself. So mixed signals or how women want men to behave really mess up how young boys feel. So they don't know how to act anymore these days. That's what I've been hearing. The mixed signals,、okay. like how how the fuck do I do I do what do I do? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi everyone, welcome to the Not Your Asian Women podcast. I'm Christine Chang. I'm Shining. Today, we have self-appointed ourselves <laughs> to help、yeah. Gen Z with dating. <laughs> yeah, for all your losers out there, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, we just—I personally just want to speak on my journey of learning about myself and the mistakes, quote unquote, that I've made. I—I don't think necessarily. I don't believe in regrets because everything、yeah. puts you where you're supposed to be. But there's a lot of learning lessons there that have served me well as I've gone older, up until dating before meeting my husband. I will acknowledge that the dating landscape is different today versus when we were dating. Now with the rise of dating apps, that's changed a lot. I think a lot of values just have shifted too for the younger generation.、Mm, I can't ke- catch up with the terms. Oh, Ethical there's polis and some like I don't know some different terms too. <laughs> yes, thropo and <laughs> so much. <laughs> so should we start? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let's give people、uh, some background of when we were dating. When did you meet your husband? Twelve years ago. Yeah, we we met through work. And how, how I didn't do the dating apps. How I, old were you? I was twenty six.、Um, That's young to me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We've been together twelve years. Holy cow! Yeah, we 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 we、uh, shed where we ate. <laughs> we didn't do the whole dating apps. We met before the dating apps were a thing. Were a thing, yeah.、Oh. I think I, I, in twenty ten, it was like a Facebook, more like、uh, Facebook, maybe AOL. Match.、Um, ma- oh yeah, Match E Harmony. That、mm-hmm. was a thing.、Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was that old. <laughs> <laughs> But that's I find twenty six pretty young to meet your person. I was older when I met P. I was thirty. Was I thirty three?、Mm. Yeah, thirty three, thirty four. And I was on the apps. I actually I loved. I had a good experience on the apps. I know everyone's different. Yeah, because you're a hot Asian woman. I, <laughs> you're like that one percent. Everybody wanna <laughs> like your photo. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're on top of the algorithm. <laughs> well, yeah, we should talk about that because I've heard things of. Especially for men, that you know, some of them don't have great experience. They're saying, "I have like zero matches. Like, what's the algorithm? Or are these apps racist? You know, they're not showing certain. Like, is it because I'm an Asian guy? I don't. I don't work at these places, so I don't know what they actually do. But、uh, we, our lovely engineer, Dustin here, we were just talking, and he was saying how <coughs> being on the dating apps can kind of distort. Your reality or how you feel about yourself based on the algorithm or who, like your experiences on them versus real world interaction. Exactly. I, I was never on it, so I can't really speak. But just in terms of apps and social media in general, it's really weird. There are no rules. If, for example,、uh, us as creators. Some of our content were pop, out of the blue,、yeah. and the content that we pour our effort, heart, and soul into might not work well at all. It just—it's so weird. And then some of the content that we did like years back will resurface as viral video again. So it could—I can see as a younger person that would. Mess up your ego, your value.、Mm-hmm. Uh, like, oh, am I is work shit? Am I not a good artist? Or do I look 
ugly. <laughs> well, they also grew up having social media too. Mm -hmm. So w in my conversations that I've had with some of them, they think like their reality is based more where I see social media as fake. It's everyone's highlights and it's different in the real world where they really because the majority of them have been on these apps since they were teens and that's how they socialize so that is their reality so it's very interesting i i think i, I think one can have a healthy relationship with it i just view it as another method of meeting somebody but if a lot of people have said i don't like it like i really dislike it i said okay then don't be on it then you don't have to be Mm -hmm. And you can yeah, switch different apps. It might work differently. It's almost like, uh, you know, like TikTok is easier to gain uh, views than YouTube. So I would imagine if, say, uh, what's the app? Tinder. Tinder doesn't work. Try Bumble. Try Grinder. <laughs> I'm sure they are. The, yeah, Grindr. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, what was I on? I was on Tinder hinge i tried bumble for a little bit but i'm not the type of woman to pursue first because you have to message them first even if it's a high but i i don't know there's something that didn't feel natural about it to me so i wasn't on that for long i think there was one called plenty of fish mm -hmm. i did meet bagel a, oh coffee some, meets bagel yeah. one of my friends is on that one and she says she likes it a lot and i met some really awesome guys you do meet some that you just don't click with either I think it's good to be discerning if you're meeting people online because, I mean, the truth is there are weirdos out there. Yeah. So no. I, I think being discerning and as a woman, you need to watch out for your safety too. So being smart about who, like where you're meeting up with someone for the first time. Women literally will tell their friends, hey, I'm going to be here tonight if you don't hear from me da, 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 like later call the police <laughs> and it oh, sounds yeah. so ridiculous but some weird shit happens out there like i don't think most men understand how unsafe it feels to be a woman in today's world but then you see college girls just fucking f <laughs> <laughs> i know blackout drunk pussy out in the open <laughs> oh my god this show, have you watched the show euphoria yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Jimmy O. Yang did a bit. You don't see Asians in there because Asians will not be in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's so reckless. And it kind of, I usually tell my friends who haven't seen, I'm like, if you're a parent, I don't know if I would recommend this show because it's like the worst that you would, you hope your kid does not do shit like that. But the, the drugs, the sex. Yeah, but that's all drugs. That, I mean, that's all kids these days, though. That's what I feel. Like, some of the stuff I hear that they do is gross. I'm like, what? <laughs> Have you heard of... I don't... I forgot the term. There's all these terms. Is it rainbow dick? I don't, I don't know what they call it. <laughs> but <laughs> Tell me more. That girls would put on different lipstick shades and all give oral sex to one guy so he would have like the different <laughs> shades of lipstick on his yo every dick. guy listening right now is like where is this where can i sign up what <laughs> like that's fun to them <laughs> uh all the men in the comments like thank god for daddy issues <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah with okay how do you feel about you know the women you know, women's liberation and women mm. being more sexually open and promiscuous and saying it's empowering the way they dressing like fuck you I'm just gonna wear I mean it's more um risque now it'll be almost like a bra and under like you can wear underwear out with boots and it's an outfit now what how do you actually think that's empowering do you think men actually like that in a long-term partner what do you think Man loves that. <laughs> but in a part, like we said before, in partnership, long-term committed partnership, men are not that stupid. They know exactly what they want. They see that as just some piece I'll of meat. They want to sleep with you. Yeah. I mean, underlying thing, assumption is just, man would want to sleep with you. That's just a fact. But, um how long does he want to sleep with you for then that 
you know, is, is a different. But these days I hear, at least from the friends that I've uh, encountered with, seems like more boys want to commit than girls. Girls are more liberated, want short-term fling or poly with different, you know, boyfriends. They're open about it. Uh, whereas, like, young boys, they want to actually have monogamy. Well, I think historically men have benefited from relationships more than women. Mm. Well, I mean, back in the day, women, they had to, I mean, because you had to get married to have a name and be a part of society. So it's survival. But just in the last, like, few decades I think there's studies that show men benefit more from it than women so more women are choosing to be single or they're divorced they'll say you know like we had kids and stuff and since we've been divorced my life is just so much better it's easier mm -hmm. and so it's like what like if there is if the marriage doesn't make a woman's life better why would they choose to get married or choose to be in relationship then where men some of them i think like i'm like how do you get through life on your own like somehow uh, they uh, make uh. it work but i'm like women tend to support men a lot you know there's that saying like you give build a woman a house she makes it a home like she'll enhance mm. the right woman will enhance your life and i think women tend to be so giving and nurturing in general it's in our nature that men i can see why they want to be in relationship but at the same time then you need to be a viable partner so that women like that you enhance her life as well so what is the setup how do you enhance her life is she like do you have a lot of money and she's looking for someone to support her financially are you emotionally intelligent are you self-aware if you don't have those things what, like I don't as a woman I wouldn't even want to be friends with you if you don't have those qualities and I think a lot of younger men based on how they're raised they're not equipped with that stuff it's a lot of my guy friends who do do personal growth they had to seek it out after they were an adult I have none of these skills because my dad never like I wasn't really allowed to talk like, talk like this I wasn't allowed to show my emotions I don't even know what the fuck I'm feeling so they look for communities of men who are also doing the work which I think is beautiful strong coffee company what do you think this is perfect for lazy bitches like me you can just pour the powder scene and put hot wow wow you wouldn't believe it my eyes was smaller than this but after that I'm awake <laughs> use code Oh, yeah. What's our code, not your Asian women, at yeah. checkout for a nice little discount? Enjoy your new crack. How I feel about women being liberated and then like sexually open, I feel it is a maybe a journey that they have to go through and then to come out of it, to learn from it. Um, it if you really do feel you can be empowered by that, sure. But um, most cases I hear is it's almost like a revenge fuck to patriarchy. Yeah. You know, so like, far, yeah. So far. It's, I don't think uh, sleep around is a way to uh, empower or to heal. You need to be alone. You need to sit alone enjoying alone time at least for me as an introvert uh to really look inward to heal to grow and uh and then also when you're not regulated you're in relationship you might hurt people hurt people mm -hmm. and that can cause ripple effect of well, this whole generation of people just fucking up each other's <laughs> mental health um girls and guys and everybody be cheating be like um a lot of dramas and hurting people so i don't i don't think it, but maybe i'm old school i want to speak on shit um who knows maybe in the long run uh future people look at us like ew why did you get married mm -hmm. you know this concept is gross you know who who the fuck knows um and then also i wasn't raised here 
I was raised in China. That's a whole lot of different culture out there. They slut shame the fuck out of you. I'll, I'll share something that's so absurd. So I'm, I've I've always been very like tomboy ish. Uh, I don't walk like lady, and I would like run and um, you know be like uh, tomboy. And people say when you run, when you when a girl walk too fast. That means she had been fucked for, by so many men. Oh my That's a r- rumor God. in school. That's so fucking <laughs> retarded. That's the most. That's the stupidest shit I've ever heard. So when like a, a, a girl that's act boyish or walk uh, too fast, too far apart, or there's like a gap in her legs, between her legs, uh, people would say, oh, she's a slut. She's been fucked. That's why she can walk this fast. That's so stupid. I I can see both sides of it with the... I think as long as you're happy and you truly feel empowered, live your life, right? I, it's more intentional. Like, for me, why are you doing what you're doing? Because I see on one hand, you know, I, I see comments from guys saying, like, I don't want to woman who's ran through i'm like you're fucking ran through dude you think women want that like men and women are different i personally do not want a guy who's fucking ran through i know i have some friends who have dated like musicians and you know they're they've probably slept with thousands of women she didn't care i'm like i actually that that matters to me that number is too high for me okay like that's dirty so on one hand i see that side and and at the same time Sometimes when I see or hear men say, you know, be doing something random, men don't like that. I'm like, I'm not doing this for men. I'm doing this for me. Like, they think, like, do you think the world revolves around you? We want to do everything to fucking impress you. So I see that side of it, too. But at the same time, I know, well, it just depends on what you want to attract, right? If you are looking for short term, I think you know and it makes you feel good dressing how you want to dress but i do think that there's some truth that if you are a woman and you dress more promiscuous that the the men don't take you seriously as long-term material most men like if he's a in a healthy mental state and has healthy community that's not that someone he would be proud of being his wife are there exceptions yes but I mean, I've heard, you know who Emily Ratajkowski is? Emily Ratajkowski. She's very pretty. Yeah. Very yeah. pretty. Very sexy. Like, amazing body. Her face is gorgeous. And she dresses very um, promiscuous. And she has said on her podcast, she says, I attract, like, the filthiest guys. Like, scummiest guys. And I'm thinking, I'm like, is that coincidental, though? You know, it's like, well, you're the common denominator here. And I'm not saying she doesn't deserve a kind person or a great love, but is there maybe something that you're doing that's causing this result? Or is it by chance that they all happen to be scummy? Right? Like, for me, I'm not, ugh, I hate, like, with men, it, that's just the opposite of what, I cannot stand men like that. I don't, I don't lead with that either, and everyone's different. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, I can. Uh, in China, is a different culture. It's a different thing. It's um, we have this term called Lu Cha Biao, green tea bitch. So <laughs> this it it's so the the that type of uh, th- so we don't dress promiscuous. So this term is referred to. Uh, women who are always cute, they talk giddy-ish, they act like they don't know how to open up a bottle, and so, you know, weak and need men's help. They're not not dressed uh, promiscuous at all. They could have glasses on and very elegant looking, but those are the type of women are whores. <laughs> so they we have a term for that. It's called Lu Cha Biao. 
it's all, all it, it's what all women like they say that it's not the women that talk a uh, big game you know curse or have tattoos or smoke or with half titties hanging out is the woman who dressed like they are uh housewives uh librarians teachers nurses <laughs> they are the ones that want to they want to be home wrecker so it's a different culture there mm. so like men men there in china do not like the uh, women who own their sexuality do not get that much men do not get men most men like because most men are intimidated by that mm. in chinese culture okay so when you when you present yourself you're very confident you you wear sh you know more review your skin you actually attract more masculine men that you the men that can um uh, 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 handle your per big personality versus the the girls that dress like that because they attract a different most men are attracted to that so uh women who want to you know home wreck or you know do with you know without integrity and steal other people you know husbands and all that they will dress like green tea bitch mm -hmm. like your next door Mm -hmm. neighbor mm -hmm. your 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 sister that 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 dress harmless you know what I'm saying? it's a different it's almost like an animal world like what what species what what you know this um octopus uh one some would act like they are uh female just so they they get in to get uh to mate with a female octopus if the male octopus is too big so I feel like it's that some, it's that um, like you adapt to different culture. What is the most attractive, and you use different strategy to play with your game. To me, I look at more like, oh, this is we're all animals. We're trying to mate. What's the strategy here, and what uh, the way you dress, talk, and all that? It's just to me, it's like, oh, everybody's like horny, fucking trying to mate. Yeah. The way, that's how I look at it. Well, they they say the younger generations are having less sex now. Mm. Have you heard that? Yeah. That they're, I mean, because what well, we didn't have online growing up, there wasn't so much stimulation. So you, you're connecting with people more. You know, and I heard the people who grew up more in like the, um, like, country bumpkin areas where there's nothing to do she's like oh yeah we just like fuck all the time because there's nothing to do out there <laughs> but now you can get dopamine hits going online tiktok the porn mm. going down a tunnel with porn that maybe they don't have as much desire to want to connect in that way but almost like it numbs you too if you watch too much porn a real life person might not get you off in the same way yeah do you notice you not, that have yeah. you noticed that before if you've watched like if you've had too much stimulation that it's harder for you to orgasm have you noticed that i mean it's pretty hard for me to orgasm to begin with so desensitize <laughs> Desen but it makes sense right it desensitizes you yeah for sure that I, and then also like you with the with social media can give people a lot of anxiety and uh having like real social interaction can uh exact uh exacerbate that anxiety so younger people um prefer talking online versus yes. real life connection that, and that already you know you, you you'd have to have real connections to have sex so. Yeah, see, that's not a good thing. I'm like, you don't, if you don't develop people skills, you know, growing up, we would have to call, there's no cell phone. So you call the landline of your friend's house, you speak to their parents, hi, Mrs. Whatever, <laughs> can I talk to Lisa? I'm like, okay, hold on, or Lisa's not home. So you're kind of building skill of like talking on the phone, talking to, like being a little uncomfortable. Now, because it's become so easy to text and all these apps it doesn't work that muscle it's like going to the gym right of meeting new people and connecting with new people in that way like how to flirt that the energy right of like 
push and pull. That takes practice, I think. And then also, yeah, that's 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 where AI could do some real good in society. You know how like they say algorithm or, or AI knows more about you than you know. Then fucking make some good match, you know, because <laughs> they are good men and women. Somehow, the somehow like this, uh, like the the good men and women want to be fucking Captain Save a Ho, <laughs> and just go after the ones that don't feel the same. Isn't that a bitch? Like it's a it's a. It's a it's a human problem. It transcends time with or without dating apps. I feel it's going just after emotionally unavailable people. Going after or that aren't interested in you. Yeah, or you 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 like somebody, but that person doesn't feel the same about you. That's just how how do you solve that? You can't solve that. I mean, and, you can build self worth so that you're just like, okay, I tried. Yeah, and then walk away instead of trying to convince someone otherwise. <laughs> I did that when I was younger because my self worth was low at one point. I'm like, oh, I can, I could earn their love. I can change their mind. True. Yeah, I did a, a poll recently on my Instagram story, asking boys, "What do you want me to talk about?" <laughs> I gave four options. <laughs> one, why bitches keep sending mixed signals. Two, I'm on the spectrum. How to talk to girls? Three, why y'all bitches love boys who abuse y'all? And four, what was four? Oh, <laughs> I want to be a man, but I'm secretly a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, there are forty people that voted that. <laughs> what was number one? Number one uh, was why y'all bitches love boys who abuse y'all. Oh gosh, I dated those guys for way too long and i'm not talking physical abuse for me it was but either like they didn't want to be in a committed relationship they breadcrumb that's the term now of just giving the bare minimum and i would stick around and be like okay this is good enough it it, it i don't think it's gender specific it's no. just in general they are there are plenty of men that uh, boys that that date girls that abuse them uh, I mean, if you want to get like serious about it, is uh, lack of self worth. Daddy wasn't home, didn't give enough attention. That's pretty much it. You have no self worth, uh, low self esteem. So you're you'll gravitate towards something that's more familiar. Abuse, lack of attention, and you want to seek for validation and approval to 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 feel some type of. It, like oh, okay now i exist i feel anxiety i feel stress so now then i exist it's well, all low self-esteem yeah well they well, i read somewhere which i it, i think it's true but it's they're recreating what they've experienced in childhood by choosing someone who's similar like treats them similar to their what their parents did but then they want to change the outcome where it makes more sense, you just choose someone who's actually different <laughs> from the beginning instead of trying to convince and change the outcome. And that's, it's so, isn't that funny? Yeah, that's the thing though. Like, that's where I, you, sometimes you just can't go after feelings. Those feelings you can't trust, especially if you have low self esteem. Because your go-to feelings are anxious, negative mm -hmm. towards yourself. So the type of people that you attract are more like predators. Because low self-esteem in the animal world, you're a prey, mm -hmm. bro. You're a prey. I can see some, like, I don't want to get, I don't want to get into details that people <laughs> would know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm a pri in, in, in private life. But um, they, they are really good boys. I see that they're a good boy. And the type of girls that they choose are predators. Mm. And uh, but they feel fire. It's this butterfly. They, they f like it, they're they're their actions were led by their dicks. So 
I did a, a clip on that. You just, you just, I don't know, you just have to manage that. I don't know the fuck to tell you. You can't fuck anything that moves, right? You can't trust when your dick moves. You can't trust it. You have to train yourself, break that pattern. Be mindful. Like you said, be mindful of, okay, this is not the type of game I am equipped to play. Dating is play. Mating, this whole thing is play. It's like, you 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 you're you're right here. You want to reach caliber of women that's up there. You can't play with that. Then you know you you then you feel some type of way, and then you get hurt, and you turn into this uh, uh person that just hates women because of uh you know the the type of women you choose, and then they don't feel the same about you, or they don't want to commit to you. Then you start hating women. You can't, you know, go down to you. Then you're the same as men who, uh, as women who hate men. You know, it's the same type of group of people. You, you're the common denominator. You'd have to break your own dating pattern yes. and the type of person you attract. Yes. And there, I, I, I hear. I also hear people say, but I. But you know, I like him, or you know, that's they just um, I don't like the you know they, they this group of men that then they're boring. Guess what? If you want, you can have your cake and eat it too. If you want a committed relationship, we're both married for together with our partners over a decade now, almost. Life is mundane. It is boring. It's, it's it's not gonna it's be not, high it's, all the time. It's not it's not high. That's drugs. Real love is energy that fuels you, that make you wanna do work on yourself, make you wanna become a better person. That you have a common goal you work towards. That's boring shit. It's like building a business, right? It's not everybody's looking at the result of oh shit, Jeff Bezos, bro. I want to be him. I want to be Bill Gates, fucking them young pussies. <laughs> <laughs> I want to become this and that. But you overlooked how much effort that they put in to build that business to take them there. That just if you want that type of real love. That 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 can stand with any um, uh, you know, with, with challenge. Time, yeah, challenge. Then you'd have to put into the hard work. You you know, overcome the boring day to day thing, and uh, you work towards your goal, and then you pick up a hobby, and then make yourself more attractive to each other. It's a it's a it's it's a challenge. It's not easy, but people want the easy shit. Like、oh, want their cakes and eat it too. That's well, not going to happen. Well, I think with the younger generation, they're used to getting things faster now, so that feels really unfamiliar to them. Like、yeah. you get to choose what you want to watch on TV at any time. If you have Netflix or YouTube, if you have internet, you can choose what you want to watch. You can rewatch things. Growing up, things were on the TV, and if you missed it. Oh yeah, everyone we were, at school's、uh, talking about the episode. You missed it for the season, and you don't get to see it again, ever, ever. And then eventually they came out with DVDs of like shows and stuff. But you had to be on it. No rewinding. You have to be there. And I just think it's really trained them to not have patience. And it's fine. Not everyone wants to get married. Not everyone wants to be in a relationship. If you are looking to be stimulated all the time and you want more short-term flings, then do that. Then, but the reality is, if you want a long-term relationship with someone, what it takes—the patience,、um, forgiveness—you know, like the tolerance of, yeah. If something, it might you have boring stints. Absolutely. How are you showing up to the relationship? Are you waiting for someone else to entertain you all the time? You really, as I've matured more, it you just eventually learn. You are responsible for yourself and making yourself happy. No one's doing. Actually, my husband once said something to me recently because I was being bratty about something, <laughs> and I said something like, "Did I say like I'm bored or like?" I, I said something where it was almost implying like I wanted him to do something. 
And then he's like, well, then you go fix it. And he's really firm and he walked away. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> he's right. <laughs> he's right. He's not to not enable me. And I love him for that. Um, but yeah, you, that you are responsible for yourself. And whatever you want in life, you have to give it. You know, it's not up to, it's not meeting this perfect person. And all of a sudden, you, your life's great. It's constant. You're feeding it like a little piggy bank. You're investing in it. And it's yeah. just a completely different mindset from being single or dating short term completely different mindset yeah if it's yeah it's it's funny because with humans where uh, we we it's the prey and predator is like when we when players men see a younger women that are unhealed didn't have a father figure, mm -hmm. insecure, but so pretty. That's an obvious prey. And this prey, they are, they are, they are, they are uh, good men that can, you know, help, uh, um, help her heal or, but that's not the type of man she, she likes because she's unhealed. So it goes with like both gender. You know what I'm, am I making sense or something? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I, I guess it's the, the type of people you attract. Well, that if you're attracted to the wrong people. That's you. If there's yeah. a pat If there's any sort of pattern, it's you. Some people get really mad when they hear that because they don't want to take the responsibility. If there's an ongoing pattern with different people, it's absolutely you. When you were saying the men who wants to like get a, a female who's maybe out of his league or you know they're not interested, I'm like step up your game then, so that you, they'll be interested in you, mm -hmm. right? Like you think that you do. That's the thing. Like they want to do the bare minimum, and think that they deserve that. No, like do the work on yourself. And be, I think. A lot gets lost in, like over their heads, but I do think it's kind of a generational thing where they were raised by men who just lived a different generation. So maybe being a provider is enough and, oh, I have a house or and I brush my teeth and, <laughs> and, and that's enough. So whatever was modeled for them is enough. And so they're like, women are so demanding today. Nothing's good enough. They want someone who's, you know, like emotionally understands her and da, da, da. And I'm like, okay, if you're not into that, then keep doing you and date how you want to date. Don't complain about it then. I do. I will acknowledge that some women, they they are unrealistic with what they're asking for. I'm like, you want him to be like your girlfriend. You want him to be like a parent fairy. You want him to be... You're not going to find that in one fucking person. That's why we have community. Humans used to live in a community and you would get your needs met by a community, not by one person. Best friend dad all the things you know so to adjust your expectations not lower people get really sensitive with i'm not gonna lower my expectations i deserve this but just adjust and be realistic that you can't be everything for one person either right but i just think whatever you're trying to track like step up your game then oh i'm sorry and i should clarify when i say your game it's like being clear on whatever your type is what is she looking for and you know, gather those skills. And I will say for, for a lot of women, we do appreciate someone who has self-awareness, emotional intelligence, good conflict resolution skills. And those are things I work on myself. I, as a kid, I wasn't taught, I mean, growing up, if you have Asian parents or they're more traditional, we don't talk about your feelings. You didn't, I didn't know how to communicate. Well, I sought that out as an adult because I was clear. I, I said, I want to, eventually get married. I want to be in a healthy relationship. Uh, I don't have the skills. I actually, the skills didn't come natural to me. I had friends growing up, but there are certain skills like conflict resolution that I did not know how to have healthy conflict resolution. I had trouble voicing my needs. That was a tough one for me and I had to learn through the years and practice of voicing what do I need. 
I might have swung the other way now where it's like my communication's like overly strong now or because if your boundaries have been overstepped for years a long time sometimes you can be more extreme and be like almost closed up like nope nope this doesn't work and then you have to learn to soften your boundaries again so that comes with awareness as well yeah I, yeah with with younger people dating i'd imagine it's diff very different than our time but at the end of the day it is about um be clear of what you want and listen to other people whatever they're showing you or telling you yeah. listen and then if your gut feelings are just you feel like oh there's something off uh trust it at least give some time for you to uh have a clear headspace before you make any decision or um act on it i don't the worst you can do is take actions when you're so emotional you you're gonna when, say some or do some you're going to regret they say when emotions are high intelligence is low <laughs> yeah but i mean we were all young once i mean those we, mistakes we, we, are there's beauty in them that's yeah. your time to fuck up and make mistakes hopefully you're not purposely hurting anybody right, right? i'm gonna uh, quote connor price a rapper a singer <laughs> he said uh I don't make mistakes. Mistakes make me. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it makes you human. I, but when I watch younger people date, I have a friend, and she's mid twenties. Right now, she's dating a guy. She's enamored by him. He's the typical guy you would choose, maybe at that age. Very charming, very good looking, tall. A lot of females I'm sure are going after him and she's enamored by him and part of me is like it's really sweet but it's and, and maybe she'll prove me wrong but I'm like at some point because I I know him you know I'm like she might get her heart broken or her expectations or her her dream of what would ideally happen might not come into fruition and that's part of it you know you're gonna get your heart broken um, oh, that sounds really cynical of me. I actually hope they get married because they're very cute together. But it's it's watching a you know watching the person's actions. How much are they investing in you? You know, you might have fun together, but it's you know by how someone shows up with you, how much they prioritize you. That you know that doesn't lie. Being good with words is one thing. You know, a lot of people are great talkers but just does he prioritize you does he care about how you feel or if you tell him like i'm not feeling you know great about this you know or does he get defensive it's like well that's not my problem or does he actually care does he care to meet your friends and family my mom told me that when i was younger and i was like that's so naggy uh, i'm not listening to you but i think it's so true if, if you're looking for long term does he have any interest in meeting the people who are close in your life because if he doesn't he's not taking you seriously mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah that that's a sign that he wants to commit knows uh your family your friends no wants to put in the effort of know more about you true right and it's like i you shouldn't have to convince someone like will you come out with my friends he or she they should want to like I really a genuine interest in knowing about your world and meeting your people. Mm. And then I, I also hear younger people say that uh, younger men don't know how to act anymore. If they f initiate moves, uh, they might think that it's uh, too aggressive. Or like girls might think it's it's a little too too forward, and younger girls do not like to talk on the phone anymore. So if you call, then that's like perverted. Yes, I have a friend who's almost 
50 and he's still trying to date women in their 20s and he says he's like yeah they don't like talking on the phone in general they don't want me to come pick them up it's too forward i'm like bro you're too fucking old if your doctor's calling you in to get a yearly what is it called Col- colonoscopy, colonoscopy. Yeah. you have no reason pursuing women in their 20s or younger okay like that's the gap is just too big are there exceptions yes but i'm like it's just different you guys grew up differently uh, like yeah you're you're more old school and then so you either adapt to that Although he's feeling, you know, he was saying that he's starting to feel old. I'm like, well, you are kind of like, that's dad status. You're, you're creeping into like the age gap is their dad. Mm-hmm. So a lot of women are going to see you differently unless they have daddy issues or something yeah. like that. Or unless you pay. Or you unless pay. you pay. Yeah. You, you have to be, be like rich or daddy. famous. Yeah, yep. rich or famous. And then oh, you, you can date whoever you want. <laughs> it, uh, in, in China, it's gao fu shui. Are you tall? Are you rich? Are you handsome? You got to have two of those. (laughs) (laughs) At least. Right? I mean, that... Yeah. So, yeah. So the younger generations, it's it's different. The interaction uh, is is different than uh, what, what we're used to. If a boy is afraid of calling me i'm like no yeah. that's crazy yes how how is he gonna handle me how are we gonna build yeah. a relationship if you won't even pick up the phone but these days if a boy calls oh that's perverted why do you call why do you right. call me it's like overstepping a boundary exactly and then why do you open up my 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 door why do you do you think yeah. i am i am not capable of opening the door myself so these mixing or uh, mixed signals or how uh, women want men to behave really mess up how young boys feel. So they don't know how to act anymore these days. That's what I've been hearing. The mixed signals. Okay. Like how, how the fuck do I do? I do what do I do? I, that's a good point. I think that's why good communication skills are more important than ever because it's changing. You know, in the 50s, there was very clear roles of what each gender did and now every woman's different some they don't want the door open for them they don't like that traditional courting and some do even though they make their own money so you never know until you get to know someone what they like and what they don't like and I think that could be tricky too with if there's an age gap too because you guys are just I heard that it it's a little easier amongst the younger when it's um their own age group versus when a, like a younger woman tries to date an older guy. I could see some truth to that. I, I just think it's communication because everyone's different now regarding what they like. And yeah. And then, the, and then and boy, they, their expectations of what, yeah. what is the point of this relationship? You have to be on the same page. Yeah. That. And then it's like, called because of the this mixed signals and then boys don't know how to act and then especially after the me too and everything i'm not like blaming nobody i'm just saying this is a fact of what i observed that makes boys don't know how to act so they just put their tails behind their legs i mean between their legs and not do anything or not say anything until a girl initiates first because I, I don't know, like I'm, I'm, I say, if I don't say anything, I'm perverted. If I say anything, I'm perverted. So I'm just going to put my head down and not say shit. Yeah, I mean, I totally empathize with that, though. I think then it's the woman's job to say if she doesn't like something and also be more understanding because no one can read your fucking mind, okay? Saying like, oh, I just say you don't prefer that he opens the door for you. Like, oh, I I prefer to open my own door. And if you say it nice and if he's understanding, that's a good sign. If you say it nicely and he doesn't take it good, that's maybe a flag, you know, that he can't even hear you and things like that. And also, I think it's intention. If you are just braced as a gentleman, like I I know a lot of uh, Southern men that are just raised like that. It's not a front. They would open up a door for an ugly bitch too. <laughs> they just they just are built like that. 
they accommodating. They're just a, 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 this gesture that they're they're raised, and then it's it's a muscle reflex. Uh, but if you are not like that, and you try to get into her pants, so you act like you gonna open the door for her, uh, carry her purse for her because you want to get into her pants, then that's fake. If you're just you're 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 naturally your man like that, regardless what this woman looks like, regardless what your agenda is with this girl, you're just like that. Then that's natural. A woman can feel it, and if you know if if uh, if you encounter some woman says, "Oh, I don't like it," and she's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't know chivalry is dead," <laughs> or you know, like be you know say just. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Be you. Don't be. Don't don't have a. You know, like this nice guy thing. Yeah. Like, oh, why are our bitches all into bad boys? No, you you have a different agenda. You you act like friends. You obviously gonna get friend zoned. zoned. Oh, that's the thing. Yeah. So you, if your if your intention is, hey, I'm very interested in get to know you because I'm trying to fuck. <laughs> now nah, I'm just I'm <laughs> joking, but. If you're, if you give that sexual interest attraction with respect, with a uh, clear communication, she's gonna see it in a different, see, see you in di different way. And, a, and confidence is a huge confidence thing. is yeah yeah. And even I I know a lot of um, younger people that are on the spectrum right now. <laughs> Me too. I'm on the spectrum. And they can't even make eye contact with a girl. And they want to know how to talk to girls. You can have confidence with uh, you being on the spectrum or not able to make eye contact. I personally find it's really adorable. I, I like nerds. Me too. I find confidence not the way in how cocky or how charming, how well you can talk. I find confidence in how knowledgeable you are with your craft and uh, how uh, much you value your work and the passion that you put in with your work. That is the most attractive trait of a person. It doesn't matter gender, what, what not. I is when when you're so focused into what you're doing, that's that's really beautiful. So if you're like autistic out there <laughs> and you can't make eye contact with a girl and then seem not confident, maybe talk about something that you're good at. There must be something you're good at. First, develop a skill that you're proud of yourself for. If you say, if you not good at anything, <laughs> yeah. If you're if you're if you're, you're a boy out there, a nice boy out there, if ask yourself that question: If you were a girl, would you date yourself? Yeah. If the answer is no, then work on it first. Totally. I think, uh, yeah. My, the way my mom raised me was just like be interesting. You know, like, do you want to be the person who's not passionate about anything? Uh, it's not attractive. I don't think that's attractive either. So whatever your passion is, you pick something and be it, interesting. Be the the passion that comes through. Yeah, it, it can be as nerdy as be uh, Dungeons and Dragons. It can be you know? anything. <laughs> you find or the your stars, yes, dinosaurs. You, yes, anything. You find your people, but you have to talk. You have to embrace whatever your passion is and talk about it. You know, you might, if, if you're thinking like, oh, but it's nerdy, because maybe you make, got made fun of it in school when you're younger or something. But if you really embrace that, you find your community. It's so liberating. And I think that's why dorky and nerdy people I also find really attractive because there's a freedom in their self-expression and embracing who they are. The charming, cool guy, I'm like, I wouldn't, I personally, I'm like, I don't, I'm not. I don't want to marry you. To me, there's some like insecurity there that you have to be this guy, this charming, cool guy. I'm like, you can drop the cool, the cool vibe. Like, yeah, right. Like you don't have to be that all the time. 
because I believe everybody is weird, a little weird in their own way and a little off. And we all try to fit in. We all try to mask our anxiety. Yeah. And if you're overcompensate by charming and cracking jokes all the time or like just going to party and and if that is your only identity, you're going to attract toxic people. So what you put out is what you're going to get. Yes. And if you want authentic people, then you be authentic yourself. And it's also loving yourself the way you are. Like, yeah, I know I'm weird, but I like you. Like, I th- I, like you, don't, you don't think my jokes are funny? I think my jokes are funny is the most attractive thing. And what's coming to mind is I, I know a guy who's really, really handsome. But the most attractive thing about him is actually that he's weird. He lets his quirkiness out too. If you just look at his avatar, he looks like a perfume model or something like that. And to be honest, most of those guys are boring. They're very bland and boring because they haven't had to work for much in their life. People move out of the street for you. They smile at you. You know, they're not as motivated. (laughs) But this guy, he's just, he's weird and he's quirky. And then it comes out when you get to know him, like that is the most attractive part of you. Exactly. Well, your face and your body is nice too, but the weirdness, yeah. the authenticity. Yeah. Um, one useful piece of advice I got when I was dating was that character trumps personality. Like always look at a person's character first. I'm not saying personality doesn't matter at all, but it trumps personality. And a good way to see someone's character is to see how they treat people they don't like. Mm. Because the only difference between that and you is time and circumstance. That could easily be you. So I was like, that's fantastic advice. <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, person who treats the CEO of a company and the janitor of a company the same way. Yeah. Yeah. So. Good luck out there. Yeah, good luck <laughs> out there. And Oh, one. Oh. One practical advice for people who have autism, because there's a lot of autistic boys out there. <laughs> Are there? It's, I mean, is I, it in com because com- in my world, comedy. Wait, what is it about comedy that attracts uh, that autistic people or people on the spectrum tend to <laughs> choose? What? No, what is yeah. there a reason? Well, because uh, we don't know boundary. And that's good for comedy, actually. Oh. The, the, and then you talk about embarrassing, you overshare. Oh. And you call out uh, em, uh, embarrassing, th- obvious things in the audience that can make a good crowd work. So all of these uh, have common traits with people who are autistic or ADHD or not normal, not mentally, I guess. <laughs> I wouldn't want to say normal, but you know, know what I mean. So in my world, I see a lot of uh, boys like that. And then they need help on how to, you know, talk to girls. Uh, at, um, one practical advice, say you notice a girl really cute you like to talk to, um, but you can't make eye contact, call out something that's unique of her say she she has a big forehead and uh you you just go talk to her and be like i really like your forehead uh my name's can we uh, whatever because autistic people talk differently you know (laughs) that they're they got no filter they just Mm -hmm. straightforward and yeah complimenting but be specific in compliments and um that's an easy way to talk to a girl if um and be and then really be genuine about it like you really do find uh this little thing you think is a little off because for us we have to have an eye for something that's off so we can call call it out and be funny that's crowd basically what crowd work is like you make fun of uh something that's weird but like in real life if uh, you're autistic, you want to talk to a girl and you notice something that's off, you can't make eye contact. Maybe look at that something that's off, but compliment that. But you have to genuinely think that's that's good. You can't just 
go up to a girl and then insult her. Hey, why do you have a big ass forehead? <laughs> uh, I've have I've, I've I've heard people <laughs> do that. <laughs> hey, why do you have a big gap in your teeth? <laughs> That's autism for you. <laughs> but um, so. But if you if you're genuine and then you're just like that, you might find your community. You might find a, a also a, a a weird ass girl that who totally. thinks that's cute, that's yes. adorable. So and you have to make a, a a risk. You have to put yourself out there and then be okay with someone go. Oh, why would you say that? Because maybe one out of the ten interactions, that girl is just as weird as you. And then you know, I will make it work. That's my only practical advice. <laughs> yeah, what、well, be genuine, but also the self love. Because if you don't know how to love yourself, th- I mean, that's how you train someone else to love you. So if you don't have it, and you're looking for someone else to give you that validation, that's not going to be a healthy relationship. So having self love in who you are, and then being able to communicate that—that's being authentic and genuine. And that's a journey. It sounds simple because it's two things: genuine and self-love, building your self-worth. But it's I, it took me years to do that, and and it helps as you get older too. You just like care less, <laughs> you know.、Um, there's a lot of healing work to do too. But I think if you master that and you're around people, there's no reason that you can't meet a fantastic person. True. Honestly, if you want it, it is out there for you. But there, there might have to be things that you have to work on yourself and reflect. How am I showing up? What do I want to create? It's there for you. It's totally there for you. <laughs>